today is my birthday, so I'm not gonna be long. I'm here at work, you know, like trying to get it in today. But uh, man, it's been beautiful. I wanna send a big shout out to all of those who came out yesterday uh, to, uh, to celebrate my birthday. I wanna give everybody a big shout out, man. We had a wonderful time. Uh, the love, the friendship, the brothers who came out to support, the sisters who, it was just amazing. They threw me a surprise party on yesterday, uh, on Saturday as a matter of fact. And I just want to say to all of those who came out to support, thank you very much. If you can hear me a little bit better, please let me know if you can hear me. Greetings, Brother Johnny. How you doing? Williams, I appreciate you guys uh, you know, tagging in today. I really do. So we're going to get right into this uh, subject matter today. We're going to talk about the trial. Uh, as you probably have read in the description box, you know, the working tools of a master mason. The working tools of a master mason. You're welcome. Boy, I tell you what, uh, Imperial Potentate William B. Smith, you guys kept that secret for a very long time about my surprise birthday party. And I want to say thank you. I appreciate that. I really, really do. And to all of those who came out to support, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. It was totally awesome. The food, the friendship. Man, let me tell you. Ah. Uh, you know, sometimes in life, you you know, you kind of tear up a little bit. I, I, I almost teared up. I almost teared up. But uh, it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. But I got to get into the subject matter today. So we're going to talk about the working tools of a master mason and the various working tools of a master mason. I know in uh, here in the United States, uh, usually you're given a few working tools. And this is no secret. You can pick up any Masonic book and it referenced the working tools of a mason. Greetings, greetings, how you doing there, Brother White? Um, and in those working tools, you will hear about the plumb, the level, you know, the chisel, you hear about those working tools. But there are other working tools you don't hear about. You don't hear about the pencil as a working tool. And some of you may say, the pencil, how's that a working tool? Well, over in other Masonic jurisdictions, outside of the United States, the pencil is used as a working tool. As a matter of fact, it is a working tool that is used to lay down the foundation of Freemasonry. That is a fact. You can go and look this up for yourself. And in my research, what I found in these particular working tools, such as a pencil being a working tool of Freemasonry, it was like, wow, you know, I, 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 haven't, I had never been told that. And so in looking for it, I found another working tool, which is called the, uh, I want to say skirt. And that was an interesting working tool also. Thank you for the happy birthday shout out. Um, so these working tools, as you will read in the description, gives you, uh, besides what you get here, it gives you another perspective of the working tools and how they are used in other Masonic jurisdictions outside of the United States those working tools are a little bit more different than what we consider because here in the United States we would say as an into apprentice you receive three working tools you know you receive the trial you receive no not the trial I'm sorry as an inner apprentice you receive the the chisel the mallet and the um, oh, I can't even think of the other one that's two. Oh, the 24 inch gauge are the three working tools that you receive as an into apprentice and then of course you know you go into the fellow craft degree but there's one working tool in particular we're going to talk about and that is the trial now me as a mason the trial is supposed to be symbolic of spreading the cement of brotherly love and you who are master masons and those who wish and desire to be masons when you receive that trial, you may be asking yourself, how do I take this trial and spread the cement of brotherly love? Well, as those who are operative masons, I mean those who really use those tools. If you ever watch a mason and how he uses his trial, he takes, when he spreads that cement, he puts it down real hard. He goes, whack, whack. And then he puts that brick in place and he taps that brick back. And then what he does is he scrapes off the excess cement. He puts it down again. He whack, whack, and he puts down the other brick. And he does the same thing over until he's built the monument, or until he's built what he's working on as a as a uh, operative mason. And so, as in speculative masons, 
we take that symbolic tool, we take that tool and we apply it when we meet other brothers, other craft, when we meet other people in the community. We take, we spread that seed, men and brother we love. We are not supposed to downgrade, disrespect, talk about, spread rumors and gossip about the next brother. We're not supposed to do that because that trial that we have is used to spread the cement of brotherly love. And once that cement is cemented, it holds the fabric of brotherly love together. And when it does that, then you understand the cohesiveness of Freemasonry and what it really means. A lot of us don't take the working tools that we get and apply them. So therefore, you are a weak mason. You are a part of a weak jurisdiction when the brothers in your own jurisdiction, you know it, but you don't correct them on how to treat or how to be a master mason, or how to be the example that you proclaim you are. This is why when you take those working tools of the first degree, here in the United States, you usually say it's a mallet and you usually say it's a 24 inch gauge. Those two don't go together. You really have to have a chisel. See, if you have actually done the work of an actual mason, you understand the chisel, it's, it's, you need that. You need the chisel in order to make sure that when you are working on that concrete or when you're working on the foundation, you don't want to crack it. And this is why you have that chisel. You, you use it a particular way. In most cases, when you, are, when you are handed only the mallet and you go to work on your rough ashlar, you're going to break that ashlar. It's not going to be worth anything. This is why in the first degree you have those three working tools, the chisel, okay, the mallet, and then you have the 24-inch gauge. Now, as you progress, you get other working tools. But outside of the confines of the United States, you will find that one of those working tools are a pencil, or is a pencil. One of them is what you call a skirt. And there's another one I can't think of. It. Oh, of course, they have the compass as being those of the master mason working tools. Also, if you uh, just so happens to visit outside, of your conference zone, you will find that your altar, which is in the center of the lodge here in North and South America for the most part, there is no altar in some jurisdictions. There is no altar in the center of the lodge, nothing at all. As a matter of fact, you will find that your three burning tapers are placed on the desk of the junior warden, senior warden, wish for master. This is the difference that you come across when you travel to other lodges. And you will find that you, here in the States, you may find the Bible, but you won't find that particular book upon the altar. You wouldn't find a book at all. What you will find, greetings, brothers, from the most wishful John G. Jones Grand, oh, out of Mississippi. Oh, well, what's up, bro? What's up? Give your grandmaster a big shout out for me. Um, you will find that in that particular incident, that those things are closer to the east of the lodge. They're at the desk of the wishful master. You will find that upon the desk of the wishful master in the east, you will find a skull. You will find a, uh, 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 a book of faith, okay? You will find your constitution and bylaws up there, whereas here in North and South America is, is definitely different. And this is why it's important to understand the craft for which you are a part of and understanding that the passwords that you choose that has been given to us are a little different also. Uh, I was speaking with some brothers and they was explaining to me the, the vast difference or may I say the pronunciations of the passwords that we receive and I thought that was interesting too because the way I may pronounce them here is not what they and how they are pronounced there, although the meaning may be just the same. So as you venture out, as you go and, and do your thing as Masons and Eastern Stars, just a reminder that the way you do it here may not be the way it's done other places. And that's not to say that it's not right. That is not to say that it's not right because what I've learned is that I've walked into lodges and I've looked at how the, and what, what uh, degree they may be on 
versus what I have here and found it to be totally different. Whereas here in the North and South America, especially here in America itself, the lodges have a particular scripture that the Bible may be open on. But in visiting other jurisdictions, that is not true. That is not true. Amongst the African American lodges and Grand Lodge systems for which you may be part of, you may find your inter apprentice have a certain one, your fellow craft, and then your master mason. That's only here. When you go outside those boundaries, you will find that the book is open. The most important thing you should observe when you enter a lodge is how your compass and square is presented, whether it be at the, at the desk of the wishful master or whether they may have an altar in the center of the lodge. And, and, and in finding out that, you would then learn that, you know, masonry is a progressive science. What is done here may not necessarily be done somewhere else. So you have to be able to travel, I mean legitimately travel, into these places and understand that, hey, I'm just a part of a bigger system when it comes to Freemasonry. Greetings, greetings, Maxwell. Uh, Maxine, tell her how you doing. I appreciate you coming in. Johnny, what's going on with you? Brother Woodson, Wood, Woodson uh, it's good to have you aboard. So and I, and I, these are just some things I'm sharing with you. So as I've indulged myself into Freemasonry and understanding and having a conversation with various brothers beyond my own jurisdiction, it has really opened my eyes to Freemasonry abroad, legitimately abroad. Um, and this is where I find uh, Freemasonry to really express itself because just like in most Masonic jurisdictions here in the United States you don't discuss religion or politics whereas if you are visiting France France them brothers are deep involved in politics Freemasonry is is all up in it so it it, it rivals what what we do here and and it makes me think you know, although we may say here in the states that Freemasonry doesn't involve doesn't involve themselves in politics, when on the back end it really does. Let's just have that honest conversation. On the back end, it does. So, in the process of being able to use those fundamental working tools, especially the trial, you will find that Masonry is involved in so many different things in. Uh, in society and when I say masons or masonry I'm saying that individually individually not cohesively but individually we are tied in be it as I said before be it the garbage man to the barber we are tied in and when I say we I'm speaking in the totality of Freemasonry although some of us might may not be privy to a lot of things that are taking place in various jurisdictions, but as a whole, as a whole, it is it is that thing because the only thing that is really unchangeable in masonry, hear me clearly, and I would challenge anybody to this: the only thing that is unchangeable in masonry, when you're speaking of purely landmarks, I'm not talking about those 20, 24 landmarks that somebody gave you. I'm talking about landmarks that can never ever be set aside or changed. Those landmarks is modes or moods of recognition, of recognition, signs and symbols, forever, forever the landmark of Freemasonry. So no matter where you go, that grip, that sign, that word, is forever embraced and embodied in Freemasonry around the world. It is up to you how you carry yourself and use it, be it for good, bad, or indifference. Because there are people who are in Freemasonry who have actually used it for other than things that would enhance them. Let's just be honest with it. What's going on, everybody? I appreciate you tuning in. Please do me a favor. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, just trying to make some things happen. You know, um, and I hope that whatever I share with you, that you will be able to get something out of it. And not only that, then go do your own research upon that which I'm sharing with you. Okay, you can actually, I'll tell you what, do one better. Look up uh, what, look up this. Since some of you believe that the Grand Lodge of England is the only way to go, look up their working tools. Look up the Grand Lodge of England working tools as far as masonry is concerned. 
they will be vastly different than yours here in the United States. This is why it's important to understand masonry from various points of view. This is really the reason why you should open various books of Freemasonry, because there are so many books out there until you get bogged down with just a few, you know. And this is why I like talking with brothers from various jurisdictions. I, I learn so much from them. And I would say this, the power, I'm talking about pure power. And when I'm saying power, I'm talking about power to make things happen, power to move things in a different direction. To, my, to the craft, to my brothers who are Prince Hall Masons, I'm speaking to you Grand Masters in particular, who are Prince Hall Grand Masters. You, if you chose to, you really have a lot of authority. However, most of you are afraid to use your authority. And you may be saying, what, this guy here has lost his mind. No, I have not. I've not lost my mind. I understand masonry from a different point of view, and I'm willing to share it with you. I'm saying that you who are Grand Masters of Prince Hall Grand Lodges, you really have a lot of authority, but you are afraid to use it. You are scared to death. And when I say that, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from a, a point of view of working together, from a point of view of, you, of uniting. Just because you are united in something doesn't mean we always got to agree. What I'm saying clearly is, is that when the olive branch of working together is really passed to the next person, it really, it, it really changes the, 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 the uh, totality of the dynamics. And when I say totality of the dynamics, that is clearly to say that my brothers who are Prince Hall, you are clearly outnumbered by those who are not. That's a fact. I'm talking working tools today. I'm talking about spreading the cement of brotherly love with the trial. I'm talking about how to utilize Masonic authority and power, okay? What I'm saying is, is that my brothers who are Prince Hall, I'm gonna say it again. You are truly outnumbered when it comes to the numbers in Freemasonry amongst the modern free, international, and ancient free and accepted Masons. You are outnumbered. And I'm, on, I'm going to include my brothers who are a PHO also. Because you don't recognize them as legitimate Masons. But when they begin to work together, when they begin to work together as it is now beginning to happen, there is going to be a power shift. And when I say a power shift, what I'm clearly saying is that things are going to be a little bit different. That means that my avenue of working with or doing things with other Masons is going to become more than just, uh, uh, oh, you're here, you're there. It's going, to, it's going to grow. It's going to enhance. And what's going to happen is you're going to miss out on a lot. And what do you mean I'm going to miss out on a lot? Brother, I'm recognized by the state Grand Lodges. No, 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 no. See, but you don't share in their wealth. You don't share in their power. You don't share in their, uh, their, their, you don't share. <laughs> you don't share in anything that they got. You don't. You may go visit their lodge and their great buildings, but you don't share in it. And that's the difference when you have, when you have the authority and power. And, and I say that because my brothers who are of the PHA affiliation, you, you, don't, you don't have that. When you go to most, most state Grand Lodge buildings, their buildings are, are magnificent and beautiful. And let's just be honest. And they have the authority and power to wield certain things in their community. They do because they have access to everything. And most of us don't have that type of access because we don't pass the olive branch, because we don't use the trial to spread the cement of brotherly love. So therefore, if you, we miss out on a lot of opportunities that we can actually create for ourselves. It's true. This is why for me and what we do here is that we want to spread the cement of brotherly love. We want to reach out to other Masonic 
organizations and grand lodges that those who may consider to be clandestine and build with them. And when we build with them, it's, it's, it's written, it's done, it's over. The numbers are going to show you. So that is the beauty of it all. This is why you take that trial and spread the cement of brotherly love. So when I come up or when they come up, we all rise up. We all rise up. Grand lodges and jurisdictions are losing membership around the board. Some are gaining, some are losing. It, it varies. Let's just, it, where the tides ebbs and flows, it varies. The ideal is, is you want to be part of something so strong, so, so intertwined that although you may look, although you may seem to be small, you're really big. This is, the, this is the formation of working with other Masonic Grand Lodges and jurisdiction. I, I will share this for you. I was talking with the National Grand Master, Tyrone Montgomery, just a few days ago. And he explained to me, since we have done this uh, Masonic amenity with each other, since we have done that, some, of, some doors have been opened to him and to some other Grand Lodges that were not uh, really having that conversation until it happened. What happened is that when they had a function, brothers who usually wouldn't come to their function because of whatever reason, it opened that door so when they came to the function, it gave them a boost in, in, in revenue per se. And it gave them a boost in, in, in passing that olive branch so now you have brothers who usually would not work together, now they do. And it enhances the bottom line. Let's just get honest with it. It enhances the bottom line. So when I have a function going on and I invite brothers out who usually wouldn't come and support me, now they come and vice versa. Now we have the opportunity to build on that. And in the future, I may not never see it. You, there may be the opportunity to build great buildings and do great things that will cause the community to rise up and be a better place than which we find it. It's, 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 it's just a process, it's, it's planting the seed. And most of us are afraid to use our working tools to plant the seed. We are, we're afraid uh, for whatever reason we are terrified, but I would tell you this, those Masonic organizations and Grand Lodges that I found myself working with have really enhanced my jurisdiction. And, and when I say enhanced, I'm saying number-wise, I'm saying support-wise, it really has boosted the, the, the jurisdiction. We've really been able to, to go outside of our borders to Trinidad, to the UK, and pretty soon it'll be Africa. I'm just throwing that out. I mean, pretty soon it's gonna be some other places, but Africa is one place where now we, I, I, I'm gonna speak because I know what's happening, that we will soon have a foothold in. And that's real talk. That's because we're not just settling to say, okay, I'm a Mason and, and my, no, it's bigger than that. To spread the semen of brotherly love is bigger than that. And this is why you unify yourselves cohesively. Some grandmasters get it, and a lot of them don't. And it's okay. It's really okay. But I'm not just going to sit idly by and just be like, okay, I'm good. No. You become comfortable. You become complacent. And then you forget how to use those working tools. That's what you usually end up doing. And then you, you get upset because you don't have uh, the membership to support different things and activities that you would like to support. Africa is waiting for you from Kim. <laughs> you know, bro, we already talked about it. We already talked about it. But yeah, we, we're gonna, we, we'll, we're getting ready to make some things happen. I'm looking forward to 2023. You know, I'm really looking forward to it. There's some things that uh, uh, that has been that has been talked about uh, that has really uh, opened me up in a way that is 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 all about uh, moving forward. And I and I will share this with you. You know, I did a thing on the boule a few days ago, 
And, and in doing that, I had some brothers to reach out to me and really break that down to me. And Coakley, Coakley, a Strokely or Coakley, I think I'm mispronouncing his name. They sent me videos saying, check this brother out. He's the guy who really can break that thing down. And I did. And he, I mean, that brother is, that brother is, is deep. Now, I had heard of him before, but I've never really watched his videos. But there were some brothers who sent, yeah, Steve Coakley, thank you, who really sent that over to me. I had brother Dwight Muhammad from um, Mystic Lodge 619 over the UK sent me some things and said, this is where you need to go to find out the information you're questioning about. And that was good. So it just goes to show you how Freemasonry really works because a lot of us are so thumbed down and don't understand how it can actually enhance your life, how you can move a certain way until it's just unreal. It's really uh, uh, unreal to a lot of you how you can actually move because a lot of you aren't ready to move that way. And, and But that's sad though. Uh, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to take my trial as a mason. I'm going to take my pencil, my compass, my square, my level, my plumb, and I'm going to begin, as I always, to really begin to, to, to break those down, to put them into a speculative way of working. Brother Tony, I see, brother, I see how Brother Tony is spreading his light. I appreciate that. I'm going to, for me, I'm going to take that, those working tools that I have received and really, I apply them, but really look at them differently than what I've been taught to look at them, okay? Because in Mason, we're taught to look at things from various points of views. It's called an advantage point. But in looking at them from an advantage point, you must be able to place them tools to build, to work, to shape, to bring forth that what you think here you can really put it here physically and that's what i'm going to do that's what i'm going to do I, I can't speak for you that's what i'm working on that's what's going to be happening in 2023 man it's going to be awesome um i got some brothers coming in from france uh in february we will be having a lodge meeting with them when they get here uh, so hey man i'm saying this is the journey I'm on. This is, this is the journey I'm on. And, and I will tell you this. I may not be able to see it in the end, but I'm going to enjoy seeing it. You'll catch that on the way home. Enlighten, enlighten thou people. That's how a, oh, okay, spreads that love. What's going on? I heard, I heard that Pure Mason spread that love. So this is, this is something that's going to be coming up. This is some things that are happening. Man, this new year that's coming in, this 2023, I'm going to, I'm going to change some things in, in my own personal life about how I do some things. I'm going to work towards a more cohesive way of, of living. And, and that's going to really, yeah, rise up. And I will tell you this. This is, this is crazy before I get ready to go. So... Uh, I, uh, those who came to, to my uh, birthday party through the surprise birthday party, that was special. Not only was that special, that evening, that night, when I uh, went to sleep, I had a dream, or may I say I did some traveling, and I had a visit from the ancestors. And let me tell you, for those of you who don't understand how to communicate with your ancestors, you're really missing out on so much, so much. But for those of you who know how to communicate with your ancestors, you know how to bring them forth, let me tell you, man, I, I, uh, my mom, my mom stopped by and gave me the biggest hug, put her arms around me, and she told me, she said, it's okay. I was like, wow, like I'm talking to you. She said, it's okay, I'm all right. My mom passed away about three years ago. But this particular visit that I had from her, it was like no other. 
I felt her presence. I felt her embrace. I felt all of that. And it was, it was beautiful. And, and I would tell you, to be able to summons, to call forth, and to have that visit from her was something special. And I'm going to share this. My two sons, my sons, brought her to me. And my sons are living. They brought her to me. It was like, hey, your mom wants to see you. And I was like, what? And I stood up, and there was my mom. And let me tell you, there's nothing like it. Uh, maybe I'm speaking too much. <laughs> uh, maybe I am speaking a little too much, but it's a beautiful thing. So look, I got to roll out. I hope that you've gotten something out of this. As always, uh, do me the favor and keep your light on. Stay out the bushes. I'm not your study guy, but I am here to help you study. Think about it and go back and research some of the things I said about them working tools. The ones from England versus the ones from the United States and see them for yourselves and understand that the way we practice masonry here is not the way it's practiced in other Masonic uh, jurisdictions around the world. Peace and be well. I'm out.